Now, you'll notice the Q. And notice what happens. The higher I set the Q, the narrower the band gets. Now, this point here is sometimes called the bat. You won't hear it very often because it's not very commonly used. But that is the technical term. And we can change the level by moving the bat up. But right here on the Q, the lower the Q gets, the wider the frequency is. Now, the Q is in the center there. It's, a, it's allowing a broader frequency response to occur from that center point. Frequency is actually set here. Now, generally, what is more musical is wider. It's generally more musical. So keep that in mind. Now, we're going to experiment with something called saturation. These EQs have something that most EQs don't have, and that's the ability to saturate or slightly compress within the EQ itself. Let's have a listen. The clock spin taking time away. The moon's my only friend. I'm lost beside this highway. Is this where my story ends? I'm walking with my shadow. That's nice. We're actually saturating a little bit. And that's what I mean by musical. There's a lot of companies out there claiming to have saturation tools and, um, you know, vintage style gear. And I actually recorded during a few eras of, of equipment and actually owned the best, you know, the Poltex and the Universal Audio, uh, the original hardware gear that was out there. And uh, most of the VST plugins that uh, try to emulate that actually don't. And it's funny reading in the forums how people pick, oh, that's the most analog or that's the most analog. But most of those folks actually never recorded a track on analog tape ever. And analog tape isn't, you know, there's a reason it's not around anymore because it's so limited sound quality wise and editing wise over computer based stuff that to do good production, uh, you can certainly do that at home in your own computer with the right equipment and the right techniques, of course. Um, so let's have a listen to that. And what we're doing is actually rolling off to super lows, but we're actually boosting in this area here and a little bit here. And we're leaving the rest alone and we're uh, enabling some saturation to occur. And I'll switch it on and off. You'll see that here. And it's on the bass guitar. The clock spin taking time away. The moon's my only friend. I'm lost beside this highway. Is this where my story ends? I'm walking with my shadow, but my feet don't touch the ground. As you can see, that makes an enormous difference. So what we're doing now is focusing on rounding out the bottom. And here's where contrast comes into play with the lead vocal, for instance, is that when you, you know, you have more contrast if you reach far extends of the frequency response range that the human ear can hear. So if you've got really nice top end, but you're lacking in the bottom end, the mix is going to sound thin. Whereas if you've got some great bottom end, but really lacking in the top, the mix is going to sound muddy and dark. So you need both. And, and it's actually easier to get good top end and bottom end than it is to get good mid-range. So these techniques will show you how. And the right equipment has everything to do with it, especially in the bass area. For instance, uh, had we boosted that range on a different EQ, it would get very different results. And some EQs would really sound terrible in that area. And uh, what is very nice about this is it's kind of second or third generation VST plug-in in the vintage style. And they're probably some of the better ones available, including the UAD, actually, for this kind of use where the EQ itself 
sounds very round and warm on the bottom. Um, take a listen again. The clock spin taking time away. The moon's my only friend. I'm lost beside this highway. Now keep in mind, we have absolutely no audio effects on the tune. And in this tune in particular, I would actually get quite into that and add a lot of different effects um, to create 3D depth and also nice bounce with some delays and some really round choruses and some nice reverbs. And But we're not doing any of that. We're just focusing on tonality for the most part, just tonality. And you can see how far the tune can go just doing that with the right EQ settings. And quite honestly, you've got to have that first in order to have a good mix.